Okay. In order to kill, there has to be five things that take place. There has to be a living being. You have to have intention to kill it. You take a weapon, you use that weapon, the being dies. Now, there's a lot of people that are butchers out here. When you go into the store and you buy some meat, is it a living being? Not was it a living being, is it a living being? No. Did you have intention to kill that living being? No. Did you take a weapon and use that weapon and the being die? No. So there's no wrongdoing in that. Especially vegetarians really have a thing about meat. Oh, you're killing living beings if you don't. If you stop buying meat, then they'll stop killing living beings. Well, I'm sorry, it don't happen like that. Not in this world. But vegetarians don't understand that there's a whole lot of insects that are killed because of growing the vegetables, digging in the soil. That happens. But what's the intention? Yeah, actually the Buddha said there's 80 different kinds of beings in your body that are dying every day. Now there was an arahat. He just became an arahat. And with his psychic ability, he started looking that if he walked, he would be killing living beings. Not even ants, but just beings in the ground. So he stood in one spot. And then he saw that if he drank any water, he was killing living beings, so he stopped drinking water. And then he saw that it, while he was breathing, he was killing living beings, so he started holding his breath. And the Buddha came around and said, Monk, what are you doing? And the monk told him. And the Buddha said, you can't look at it that way. That's why you want to become an arahat, so you can get off this wheel of sansara and not have that kind of problem again. I mean, there's all kinds of beings inside your body that are dying just because you put food in your stomach. Can't stop that. Gotta eat, right? And in the Jivaka Sutta, the Jivaka was the uh, doctor that attended the Buddha. And there were some um, Brahmins that were around, Jains I guess they were, that started criticizing the Buddha because he ate meat. And Jivaka went to the Buddha and said, well, what's the deal with this? And the Buddha said, suppose there was a monk that was invited to somebody's house for a meal. And there was meat, and there was other curries, and all of this other kind of stuff. Now, if he ate that with anything other than loving kindness in his mind, then he wasn't following the Buddha's teaching. And then he said, monks, there are three instances that you cannot eat meat. If you see that being being killed, if you hear them cry out while they're being killed, or if you suspect they're killed directly for you. Okay? People want to give me shellfish. They want to give me lobster because they think it's a great meal. I can't eat that. I suspect that it's killed for me. So there are some restrictions of being a monk, but when somebody brings goat meat or something like 
beef or whatever. I didn't see it get killed. I didn't hear it get killed. I don't suspect that it was killed for me because most people will go to the grocery store and buy the meat. So that makes it allowable for the monk. I had a, a German student that came and he started practicing meditation with me a, a couple of months ago. <clears throat> and somebody told him they wanted them they wanted him to go out and pull weeds. And he wouldn't do it. He said, I'm breaking the precept of killing. It took me almost two weeks to convince him that the Buddha didn't say anything about grass or uh, plants. He didn't say anything about that. It was sentient beings. I told him he couldn't eat any food. He couldn't eat any meat. He couldn't eat any vegetables because he was responsible for the death. He finally got it. 